another episode ready to go They're gonna talk about the good and the trash and anything in between Cherishing they believe get ready for Halloween It's the horror show I know you miss those guys Tune in and find out what's on their list tonight They butcher and dissect Take apart and mutilate Listen to your two favorite brainiacs communicate It's the horror show Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Horror Show, the show that dissects, mutilates, dismembers, and butchers all of your favorite and not-so-favorite horror movies and other horror-related events. I'm Sean. I'm Joe. Hello, Joe. What's going on, man? Nothing. I forgot we, we, were, we were off for a week. It felt... It didn't feel like that. Yeah, I mean, we. it's not like we were off-off. We had our, our live show. Yeah, I guess that's true. I guess it's not like a total off. Boy, and that was a fun live show. I Yes. That people said it was one of our best. Uh I tend to agree. It was so much fun and we had a costume contest. Mill James uh won that with her awesome malignant costume. <laughs> a legitimate movie prop that she did there. She crafted and put on the back of her head. Uh so that was sick. Uh loved it. Um, so she won a t-shirt, one of the new t-shirts, and, uh, we had a couple other winners. Bryant taking second place with, uh, his, uh, fuck, what's his name? Eddie, Eddie. Chris Penn. Yeah. Chris Penn's character from, uh, Reservoir Dogs. And he had an impression, which I think got the points higher for him. Sure. Came in hot with an impression too. So, and he looked fucking just like him. It was actually crazy. Um, he did. And then we had two people tied for third. Um, it was Sarah Nasta with, oh my god, <laughs> with the Richard Dreyfus. Uh, Dreyfus from Jaws. Yo, that was so fucking good because Paul was on too. She goes, do you know who I am? And we're like, no. And then she slowly applies this red beard to her face. And you got you guys were like, holy shit, are you? <laughs> Richard Dreyfus from Jaws. That is what it was. It was fucking awesome. <laughs> that was like the best. Somehow looked exactly like him. And it's all it takes, I guess, is <laughs> circular s- glasses and a fucking stupid winter cap and a fucking beard, I guess. Yeah, she nailed it. Nailed it. Nailed it. And uh, Aaron uh, McG- McGreal uh, did like a crazy vampire outfit. Um, so, and we had, oh my God, and we should just shout everyone out that came on with the, the, the costumes. You guys were all great. Yeah. Um, all of them them were absolutely fucking awesome. So appreciate y'all for copping on and doing that with us. Um, Bryant, Sarah, and Aaron, I'll be sending you some little gifts for second and third place. And, uh, Mill James will be getting that shirt when they come out. Uh, shirt pre-orders are closed. Also, so thank you all to everyone that pre-ordered. Uh, it was a freaking huge order. Um, so we'll be putting those in and getting those as soon as we can um, and getting those to you, hopefully before the holidays. So, And by holidays, I mean Thanksgiving. So that's my, that's my goal. I'm not holding this out until Christmas. I'd rather fucking shoot myself. So, um, yeah. And then I, I don't know how much extra we're going to order of those this time around, but um, we might have some that pop up in December. So... Keep your eyes peeled on that. Um, and then... Uh, it's crazy is fucking November already? Oh, dude, it's fucking absolutely nuts. It's like, we're going to be in the second week of November already? That's crazier to me. That's nuts. Um, and I also want to give a shout out to Thom Tum, our brother. Just going through some tough times, so appreciate that guy. Um, so I just want to shout him out. And, oh... We have a schedule change that we do need to discuss real quick. Um, So originally, we had posted something on our Instagram. Uh, Reagan had posted the schedule where we were going to do Thanks Killing 3 as a live show on the last week of November. We are actually not going to do a live show in November um, because, as you can imagine, it gets kind of busy around Thanksgiving time. So um, it just doesn't make sense right now. For us to do that. So we're going to do Thanks Killing 3 as a, as a regular episode that week. So we're not going to take any weeks off in November. Like, we're still doing it. Which is just as crazy, by the way. <laughs> but we just couldn't do it that weekend. And, it, like, the way our schedule is set up, it just it wouldn't have worked, like, moving stuff around. So I think this is better. But what we're going to do is, instead of a live show, we're going to do a, a full bonus episode for the Patreon members in November. I don't know what movie yet, but... Um, so basically like a full real episode, 
um, at the end of the month, which will be cool for you guys. And then in December, we're going to do our free live show, free for everybody to come on out. And we're going to do two movies, not another teen movie. And then a, a, a second, I'll, I'll, I'll leave the second one as a surprise for December. And that's going to be December 18th. So mark your calendars and uh, yeah, that it, sh- it should be December 18th. We, we don't hold us to it. All right. We might fucking move shit around, but um, December 18th. And it's going to be a two, two for, we're going to do one at, I think like 3 PM for the European audience. And then uh, one at our normal nine o'clock. So that should be uh, fucking awful. <laughs> Should be absolutely yeah. fucking awful gotta, for everyone. <laughs> you gotta learn how to pace. <laughs> we are gonna have to set a pace for not another teen movie, which I think will be fine. We'll just have some nog, maybe. Uh, sit by the oh. sit. <laughs> sit by the. Talked phone. about shitting our pants on the fucking Patreon. <laughs> yeah, why, if we just drink nog the entire time. <laughs> I've actually never, I don't think I've ever drank an alcoholic eggnog. I don't think I've ever done that, so. No? No, I don't think so. We could do hot toddies. Just putting stuff in tea? You know, it's actually not even tea in there. I I, I learned that uh, once. That was crazy, but it's the best. Can't be true. There's no tea in it. A hot toddy? Yeah, they use different spices. It's just water, hot water, and fucking Jameson. <laughs> and then, like, a bunch of spices. I was I was at a bar. They fucking handcrafted it in front of me, and I was like, oh, fuck, there's no tea. It tastes like tea, but there's no tea in it. Yeah, because tea is fucking spices. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Listen... Fucking should we <laughs> should we talk about what we're gonna do mid December through January? Because I feel like people are gonna lose their mind. Please, because I don't remember. Uh, dude, you want me to say okay, fine. Guys, this Wait, is no. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but I honestly don't remember. I, I'm very curious where you're going with this. <laughs> I mean, it's it's a good thing. I think people are gonna lose their mind. I, I'm gonna say it because I think people are gonna be super excited about it. Um, starting December 14th is where we have it penciled in right now to make it line up with the release of a new movie. Uh, we are going to do every Scream movie. Scream 1, 2, 3, 4, and then culminating on January 18th when we do Scream 5 the weekend it comes out. Er, I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I, I am super pumped. Uh, I think we talked about this either on Patreon or this mo- show, but uh, I just watched Scream 1, and for some reason, every year, I'm surprised that it might be one of the best horror movies ever made. <laughs> Dude, okay. So I watched it in October, and I said the, I said pretty much the same thing to Tina. Like, I, I, I know that's good. I know that's great. And right. I'm like, why don't I consider this top five material? Because it is. And it every is. time I watch it, I'm like, holy shit, this is perfect. Like, I fucking love this. I, it, dude, it really is, like, top five all time. <laughs> like, it's fucking... I, I am, honestly, I, I agree. Somebody just recently asked me my top five, and I, I listed it, and Scream wasn't in it. And then after watching, like, it is. It is fucking top five. It's absolutely. It's so fucking well done. It's it's insane. But I am excited to go down this wormhole of two, three, and four. That... <laughs> that because i always forget them like i honestly don't have any memory of it a little bit of two a little bit of two three i have a good memory of two three and four i don't remember at all other than three somehow managed to make a creed song that was good in the soundtrack (laughs) i think you brought that up (laughs) uh so that's that and then uh yeah the rest of november guys we're doing class of new we're starting trovember tonight our our Always our favorite, Trovember. Uh, so we're doing Class of Nukem High <laughs> this week and Tales from the Crapper next week. And that's that we're, we're doing two weeks of Trovember, which I think is a fair thing to do. <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's totally fair. It's totally fair. <laughs> and then we're going to do Turkey Shoot November 24th, which is one of my faves. Uh, Ozploitation filmed in. I've never seen it. Oh, filmed in Australia. It is so it's the dangerous game. Uh, if you hit it on the head with a fucking mallet, um, <laughs> All right. uh, and then thanks killing three, a movie, um, that both Joe and Paul messaged me and we're like, why are you doing that? <laughs> why are you doing that? 
Dude, we watched thing. So, I don't know if it's like a normal thing. I honestly don't know if it's like an Italian tradition or, or not. Like, even though Tina and I were, were living together, like the night before marriage, you're like not supposed to see the bride. So, even though it was my house, I had to go fucking sleep at Paul's house. <laughs> So she could stay there and get ready. So I, I stayed at Paul's, and when I got there, he made me <laughs> when I got there, he made me watch the Clint Eastwood musical "Paint Your Wagons." And I was like, "Let's watch." <laughs> I was like, "Let's watch something else." And he put on I can't I can't remember the first one, but it was fucking bad. It was fucking real bad. But then we put on Thanks Killing Three, and I honestly almost called off the wedding. It was so fucking terrible. <laughs> it was the worst thing that's ever happened to me watching. <laughs> Thanks, killing three. <laughs> I had no desire to do anything after that. <laughs> well, so that should make it for a good episode. <laughs> Sean, it's fucking miserable. <laughs> Maybe we could do that episode with Paul in person so we can just go off the <laughs> off the rails. I'm down with it. I'm down. I don't even know if you'd agree. It, it was honestly that bad. And I don't know if you would agree because he was miserable too. <laughs> I mean, the fact that Paul messaged me privately and was like, why, why are you doing <laughs> He was honest. Well, we have a group chat. (laughs) We have a group chat. He messaged me privately to be like, like he knew it was me and was just like, what, what are you doing? (laughs) You idiot. (laughs) Oh, fuck. Yeah. Um, so that's our, that's our lineup for this week. So hope you guys enjoy, hope you guys enjoy that. Um, and if, if people hear me like sniffing, I, it's, it's almost ski mask season. For for the recording, I record in the sunroom. I did it at my parents' house and it was freezing. It's just as cold here, so I have a space heater on and it's like fucking up with my allergies right now. So, apologies. All right, noted, duly noted, duly fucking noted. So, but hey, there's no more grins. <laughs> We're swapping out the crickets for the sniffles. So, yeah, well, there you go. Everyone fucking deal you know with people. <laughs> deal with it. So someone, I think it was Mike Prez, uh, messaged me. He's like, "Oh, I honestly, th- he's like, I honestly thought you guys were doing that because you were doing like a summer theme. He thought we were like adding it in as an effect." <laughs> Actually, I think so. I was gonna do that one week, like I I set it up to do that, and I'm pretty sure I stopped because it was already in the microphone. I was like, "Oh, well." <laughs> I was like, "This this bit is not funny." I mean, well, I mean, it is, but <laughs> it's not it's not here anymore. First it was the birds. Which I don't even have that many trees near me. And then the fucking crickets. No the sniffles. Sirens. I can't I can't win. Oh man. Um well we've speaking got of not winning. Speaking of not winning. <laughs> we've got a G. Yeah, what's more idiotic? What's more idiotic? Continuing doing uh Trovember or, or participating in No Nut November? Dude. No Nut November is a bigger waste of time than anything Trump has ever done. And that's a big fucking statement. You gotta be a fucking idiot. <laughs> I could say a lot about fucking trauma and the shit they put out, but like fucking No Nut November, I no, go get the get, get a grip. You fucking idiot. I I I, I couldn't agree more. <laughs> Couldn't agree more. I we're almost for we have a limited amount of time left on this earth. I'll be fucking damned if I'm not going to nut while I still can. And, and then even like I'll be dead soon. And before that, there's a good chance I won't even have a prostate soon. So like I'll, I'll never nut again. Like I'm not going to pass that up for November. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Uh, I I think you're you're I, I I think these people need some help if if they're participating in No Not November. I'm just going to be straight with you. I don't I don't like it. I don't think it's okay, and I don't think it's cool. So <laughs> that's my two fucking cents. <laughs> what about what about Movember? Uh, you know I'm not the biggest fan, but you know I can't grow a mus- I can't grow facial hair. So. Yeah, that was always my issue too. So is there a little jealousy behind there? Yeah, a little bit, you know. I can't. Oh, what changed for you? Cuz you can grow it now. Um, I don't know. It just grew in. But like even yeah, still it, it fucking sucks. It's it's not great. Like it looks not great. It, it looks like a fucking like a fucking I don't even know what like a 1930s mustache. Like when I shave the beard, it looks like a fucking it like points down, like it looks. <laughs> I look like I'm from like from Gone with the Wind or something. <laughs> what? I can't. What's that guy's Maybe name? One day, uh, Clark Gable. Clark Gable. I have a Clark Gable mustache. 
And it's like not great. Like who wants a mustache that's like thin and points down? Not me is the answer. Yeah, it's like it looks exactly like Clark Gables, except he, I think he shaped his that way. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking maniac. <laughs> if you can't tell, I don't think I have a lot to say about Nukem High too. So that's what oh. I'm <laughs> Oh, I'm so well so okay, so Nukem High, real quick, let's do it. Cause I love I actually love doing this and some sometimes we do it and sometimes we don't. Would you recommend people watch it? Great, great question. So to not give you <laughs> to give you a long-winded answer, <laughs> I think the first Nukem High is legitimately good. Okay. For for what it is. Um I, I don't know what he did here. Like at least the first one had a story. This didn't. This honestly it didn't have a story. It, it just it's just chaos. Um and that hack Peter Jackson ripped it off the following year when he created Dead Alive. Did you did you, did you notice any similarities of that? Like the rat monkey and yeah. and like when the mom in Dead Alive turns into that giant thing for some reason. Honestly, it looks it, exactly like the things here. It was like a little weird. It was a little weird. I'm not even going to I'm not even going to front. I think there's something to what you're saying. <laughs> I do. <laughs> um, uh but would I recommend it? I don't I don't think so, dude. I don't think I would. <laughs> I would absolutely recommend this book. <laughs> if, Why? if you liked Class of Nukem High, get ready for what amounts to one of the greatest sequels ever created. <laughs> <laughs> People before this episode were like, I think Joe's going to love everything that we do and Sean's just going to want to give up. Seems to not be the case. Uh, this... I mean, it could have just been like a thirty-minute short. It, like <laughs> he he did too much to to have that much like excess nudity and like over-the-top dialogue. It honestly became exhausting after like thirty minutes. Like, all right, I fucking get it. Like, just wrap the shit up now, <laughs> dude. My favorite was they give you a flashback with a with a uh, a narrator. Then they start the movie. But then they're like, <laughs> and this is to think this all started two weeks ago. And then we get another flash. Another flashback. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, that guy is my biggest problem with the movie because a lot of the dialogue is typical trauma, meaning it's like overdubbed and it's just like big, burly, large men talking in high pitched voices, <laughs> doing, doing like Bob Saget's routine from America, America's what? Funniest Videos. That was my joke. That was one of my jokes. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I mean, that's what they're doing, right? It's just, it's just guys that don't fit that voice. Hey, la, la, la. Um, but this guy, why does he get so much dialogue? He's not interesting. He doesn't have a silly voice. And he just talks into a fucking recorder for way too long. And he talks the entire, he narrates everything. Fucking, it, it's so weird. <laughs> It's so weird. And that fucking dude that's doing his Tiny Tim fucking impression. <laughs> <laughs> this has uh, two directors, uh, one Wait, of which is... What's the, tiny, what's the Tiny Tim horror movie? Did we do that? Fuck. Um, what is that? We did, I think. Wait. We definitely did, right? Blood Harvest. Blood Harvest. Did we do it? Yeah, dude, I think we did. I mean, I've seen it and I don't know why I would have watched it. That's it. That's the that's the thing. <laughs> Taking the hiatus really fucked me up because there's a lot of movies that I'm like I'm convinced that we did for the show and we didn't, which means I had to have watched it during that hiatus because it's like recent memory. So it's like, what was I doing? Why was I doing that? Dude, like, I don't see Why did we even stop the show if I was going to watch Tiny Tim <laughs> like free time? I don't see it in our list of movies. <laughs> That's it, psychotic. The fucking list. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, the, the big problem was is the cult movie challenge. I think that was like a big factor in it. Ah, I only did like five of those. Like I, I gave up like five five weeks in both times. <laughs> I went through them all, and it was it was exhausting. Um. 
So, yeah, this is directed by uh, this guy, Eric Luziel. He does nothing else except the third one. And then the Don- one, yeah. Donald Jackson, who uh, directed Hell Comes to Frogtown, um, as well as Return to Frogtown, which I did not know was a movie. <laughs> and then looking through his his movies, he appears to just love frogs, because then we get Toad Warrior in 1996. <laughs> And Max Hell Frog Warrior in 2002. <laughs> so, <laughs> kind of a weird thing. <laughs> this guy loves frogs. <laughs> it's so fucking weird to me, but uh, God bless him. God bless him. We got, uh, we have uh, 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 Brick Bronski, who is a pro wrestler uh and uh a trauma actor he also worked in uh jcvd's the quest jean-claude van damme's the quest i saw uh, he was in that but that's that's the most he really does with his career and the poor dude uh died of covid not a couple months ago so r.i.p Did he? yeah super sad uh 57 years old bummer brick bronski what a fucking name great name brick great name. Bronski. terrible ponytail Terrible ponytail. <laughs> Terrible ponytail. Uh, they call. Did you notice they called him Richard or Richard Smith at the beginning of this movie, and then changed it to Roger Smith? <laughs> okay, okay. Because I, <laughs> I was gonna ask you. <laughs> that's that's so bizarre. Because I was gonna ask you if they were changing his name. Because they they most definitely called him Richard Smith in the beginning. Yes. Yes. Because I don't take note. I don't like. I I write down like three things. Each time we do a show, <laughs> just for like a talking point for me. And I have Richard Smith written down <laughs> within the first five minutes. Yes. Richard Smith is what he goes by in this, but is Im- only once. And then is immediately switched to Roger. Weird thing, though, if you look at <laughs> Class of Newcomb High 3, he is listed as Richard Smith slash Roger Smith. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe they explain it. I guess we have to do this. Slash now. Dick Smith. Of course, because like I mean that you know that's what it was supposed to be. I feel like they fucked up going to Roger. Like I, f- I feel like Lloyd probably saw the final cut and was like, "You fucking idiots!" <laughs> Dick Smith. His name was Dick Smith, Richard Smith. Get I it? <laughs> I can't believe how it was. Like I mean, we we've been doing this all along, and we interviewed Lloyd, so, so I can believe. So what I'm trying to say is, it's astounding. How immature trauma movies can be. Like, th- there's there's a building that gets crushed at the end, and it's just called Tit. <laughs> give, me, give me a fucking grown ass man Dude. calling a building Tit. Trauma, trauma Inst- Institute of Technology is what Tit stands for. I know, I know, but it's just, oh yeah, it's so fucking immature. Uh, and it was also dedicated to him. It said in memory of Lloyd Kaufman on the building, L- Lloyd Kaufman Memorial Auditorium. <laughs> <laughs> Um, fucking incredible. Um, the, uh, so we got Brick Bronski, uh, you got Lisa Gay in this, who's just a trauma staple. Um, she was in a lot of the Toxie movies. She was Casey's mom from Terra Firmer, but that's about all we got for this one. And, you know, um, some of the trauma movies we've done in the past have been super fun where you can find a lot of background stuff on it or like cool. Like they, they always make like behind the scenes movies like full documentaries they make like documentaries yeah. for each movie they did each movie but they did not do one for this which i was a little bit bummed out about but uh cuz i was i wanted to know everything about this because i guess the movie doesn't t- tell me enough, <laughs> enough um yeah yeah so uh before we get into it, I did want to just say one thing. This this guy, this director, Eric Luziel, said uh, he hired three porn actresses. But what was funny is all the regular actresses would be the ones that were partying all night, getting down and having crazy parties. And the porn actresses went to bed early and read books. And he thought that that was very funny because porn was just a business. <laughs> Great. That's this is IMDb's trivia, by the way, for this movie. It's like the only only piece of trivia. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for uh, thanks, thanks for clearing up. <laughs> Fucking idiot. Oh, can you believe that? Um. So we get a recap in this movie at the beginning, which I you know I was watching it and I was like, boy, this movie has. Wait, some- I have to. I have to. Sorry, I have to interrupt because because that's honestly so bizarre to bring that up, but also. 
that what that means to me is that guy just just clearly asking the porn actresses to go out with him at night, and they're like, "Oh, we got to go back and read," and then clearly just went out and did. That. Uh, yeah, you're a hundred percent right. <laughs> and of course, like the normal women did not want to fuck this guy, so they were like, "He was like, oh, what a fucking bizarre turn of events." <laughs> I hired three so I could have two backups. Uh, and, <laughs> and also, by the way, they were probably also partying and just told him they were. That's reading. what I'm saying. That's what, that's <laughs> oh, what okay. Saying. okay. <laughs> Sorry. I fucking ruined your joke. That's super fucking funny. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It was like, you want to fucking party? Oh, uh, yeah. We're, uh, we're. Gotta, we're, gotta go read. <laughs> we gotta get a good read in before we act in class of Nukem high too. We're he's still he's still talking about it to this day <laughs> before you constantly call my breasts fucking what does he call them the, the entire movie they say eight thousand times large melons weighty melon <laughs> weighted melons well, dude they they can't stop saying it in this movie fuck <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about I do I don't remember what it was I wrote it down somewhere. They won't stop saying it. It's in it. Oh, he, they melon heavy. <laughs> they're, they're, they're like the subhumanoids are like to dis, distinguish a male and a female subhumanoid. Cause I guess, I don't know if they actually are male or female. I don't think they are kind of, but there's, there's subhumanoids and then melon heavy subhumanoids get it. Cause they have breasts, exposed breasts. So that's. <laughs> That's the thing. But then they say it constantly through the movie. Even there's one scene where like they're all evacuating and uh like like the military's running out and there's also a naked woman, of course, and they're like melon <laughs> melon heavy ladies first or melon heavy breasts first. And she's like, Oh, thank you. <laughs> and they all wait to let her go through the door first. So fucking weird ass shit. Uh yeah, very immature this movie, by the <laughs> by the way, if you couldn't tell already, but um, but we get a recap of the first one, right? And I was like, wow, I, I really do like the first one. It's so insane. It's absolutely outrageous. Right. It's fucking nuts. Um, and I mean, I, I do have issues with this. I mean, I was definitely joking saying this was a fucking <laughs> amazing. It's not amazing. It's a fucking mess, but <laughs> I, it, it was trauma enough for me to get through it and be like, I kind of like it. I don't know what to tell you. Um, that's fair. But but the first Nukem High, like, oh, my God, they showed so many great things. And, like, even the commentary was super funny because you have this narrator who's talking about the events of the first one. And he's, like, listing, listing all these insane side effects from the nuclear plant. <laughs> and then he's, like, in the worst of them all, it caused them to dance badly. And it, like, cut, and I think that's something we even discussed on that episode, which was, like, they danced like absolute psychos. Like, it was actually alarming. And so it was, like, super funny to hear them say that. Um and they showed like the guy that grabbed that grew fucking breasts and the weird fucking pregnancy, all those fucking weird ass scenes, dude. It was that movie is just so out of control. Um, and I think I think this guy he was trying, right? He was, he was. He was trying to replicate that, and it's not great. <laughs> it's not. It's really not great, but. You know, I again, it it's like, it just wasn't full length material to me for sure. The world was welcome pretty quickly. Well, and I mean, you know, you said there's no story. I I agree. I mean, it took me literally three quarters through the movie to be like to put together what was actually happening and why why I cared why I cared about any of this happening. <laughs> The rest of it, it was. It's just like all shock value, right? It's just like tr- tra- exactly. trauma, trauma, shock value. Like, oh, this is what trauma people want to see, um, including the Toxic Avengers showing up, which was <laughs> Toxic Avengers showing up, uh, you know, breaking the fourth wall, being <laughs> meta. It's like when in this opening scene after they finally do the flashback. Well, let's we'll get into it. They they. <laughs> They reopened the toxic waste plant, right? Right. But in order to do that, the stipulation was they had, they also had to be a junior college <laughs> with like on the floor, yeah. <laughs> which is funny. That's a funny idea. Yeah. Um, and they had they had small locker spaces, which meant that 
<laughs> which meant that they had less clothing, which is <laughs> what reasoning. <laughs> I, I love that. And then you just get like a montage of, you know, scantily clad or and or topless women, which I'm not going to complain about. But then it's just like that's all it is for 25 minutes. It's actually way more excessive than trauma normally is, too. I, I yes. felt like, like, I felt like, again, like you said, like, trauma nudity is, to me, pretty fun. Like, it, it, it's funny. It you, is. You know, yeah. there's movies where you're like, <laughs> I don't know how to explain this. There's movies where you watch, like, naked actresses, and you're like, God, I hope she knew what she was getting into. Everyone in a trauma film looks like they're having the best time of their lives. You know what I mean? Like, I agree. Everyone's yeah. on board. Like, you know, everyone's cool with what they're doing. Like, you know, like, and that's always like a nice, <laughs> a nice feeling when you see that. And you're like, okay, like, I, I don't think anyone here is doing anything that they don't want to do. Um, yeah, it looks like a party. Yeah. Exactly. And I'm sure it is. I, I, I'm sure it's fucking insane. I would love, yeah, I would love to be on set with, of a trauma movie. <laughs> Um, so it was, it's, it's really cool, um, in that sense, but, uh, in, in this one, it just feels just like a lot more it, it, and it just wasn't like, Oh, I, I don't know. Like it just, it was excessive. You said, you said it feels more excessive. Like I think of terror firmer, which is one of the more <laughs> like, like out there trauma movies. Yeah. Right. But, it, but I think it works so well because there's things that it gives you a break. Like there's things that happen that progress the story and the characters along. And then he hits you with it. And you're just like, Oh my God, I can't believe what I'm watching right now. So the, when you first see it, you're like, this is awesome. Like this movie's going to be off the rails, but then there's nothing to give you that break. So after a while, you're like, all right, I fucking get it. Like do something to, to move this along, please. I agree. I agree. Actually. And I, I don't want to interrupt us talking about this show. Cause we keep doing that, but um, I, you know what, an idea you had and you pitched to me, and I thought about this just cause of terra firmer. Um, I think it's like so genius. Joe was pitching like, I, I don't know. I mean, we didn't decide on an exact details of it. But oh, going back? Doing, doing like a once a month, like fucking rewind on a movie that we've already covered in our first run again, this run. And I yeah, thought it was yeah, fucking from like, genius. For like 2015 or 2016, I would love to do that. Yeah. There's a lot of things. We tried to be like scholarly back then, which. I know. <laughs> we're fucking not. <laughs> I want like, I want to go back and watch some of those. Scott, it was like a mix of like scholarly and also like, uh, like, like one of the reasons like I, I needed to like take a break from the show was because I was doing the same material. I felt like every episode and it was just like. This movie stinks because this guy stinks. And it's like, okay, like, I, I get it. Like, you know what I mean? And um, I, I'm not doing that this time around. So I, I, I'm i really, I'd like to take a look at it. And also, as people have pointed out, our opinions seem to have changed dramatically on certain things. <laughs> so <laughs> my favorite was the guy that was like, hey, it was super weird when you guys were talking about how much you both would defend and love disco. And there is literally an episode where you shit on disco for like 15 minutes. <laughs> And I was like, oh, that's fucking funny as hell. Like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, I think that's, I think it's genius. And I don't know if it would be like once a month, but like, I think, I think there's definitely room to do that somewhere in there um, or, or like a live show or something. I don't know. I, I'd like to, I would love to go to, back. Yeah. yeah same. Cause I remember being critical about Wolf Cop. I've right, never seen right. Wolfcock before or after, and I'm like, why the fuck was I critical about Wolf Cop? Some guy's <laughs> dick gets mutilated, and it's about a cop that's a wolf. Like, <laughs> I, I agree. I, I, I would probably enjoy that. Now. I thought about that same movie too, when because Paul brought up for some reason Wolf Cop Two was like, I don't know why. Like Paul's so fucking. <laughs> Paul's like, have you guys watched Wolf Cop fucking Returns or whatever? And we're like, <laughs> no, what? <laughs> okay, thanks, Paul. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I was like in that moment, I was like, man, I feel like I, I don't even want to re-listen to that episode. I feel like it, I'd get like douche chills about myself, but I would, I, well, that, that's why I brought it up. I, I feel like listening to my takes from 2015, 2016 would, would literally like devastate me. <laughs> <laughs> would we, would we cut in our takes? Oh man, I don't think I could do it. Honestly, I, oh, man. I'm too fucked up. I'm I like I'll fuck me up. Like I, I'm too <laughs> critical. I, I like I'll cry. No, I, 
I kind of like that. I kind of <laughs> like that. I, it, it w- you said do shows. Like it, it would, it would give me goosebumps <laughs> to hear my fucking shitty take. Um, I like that idea. I would legitimately like scream into the microphone, probably because like I would just not. I don't know if I'd be able to handle it. But maybe that's what I need to do to myself. Maybe I need to like just fucking teach myself a lesson. <laughs> <laughs> And play because I'll end up agreeing with all the negative reviews that we've gotten because they probably picked like an episode like that and we're like these fucking idiots. <laughs> yeah, no, I I, I like the idea. We, right. sh- we should explore that. We'll think about that. We'll, do, we'll put an exploratory committee together. Workshop. Being it. critical about zombievers. <laughs> Give me a fuck. <laughs> what the fuck are we doing? <laughs> I'd probably have so much fun now. You're not you're not making me want to do this anymore. <laughs> I forgot about zombievers. Fuck. God damn it. Hey, we lived, we learned, and then then we got loves. All right. <laughs> then we took a hiatus that infuriated a lot of people and then came back and got it together. Um I actually think we were better. no, I don't know. I'm not gonna get into it. Listen. We've got a lot of trauma to cover here, uh, including this credit. Uh, uh, we get into the cr- oh well. Okay, so Joe, as Joe said, they built a junior college, right? And we get the most insane just montage of people fucking running. They're all running away from something. Um, there's people with gas masks on that are like rubbing it. Dude, that scene is like a minute long of two people fucking in gas masks and like. <laughs> rubbing the gas mask canisters together like they're like Eskimo kisses. That scene lasts for 60 seconds and that doesn't make any sense <laughs> whatsoever. <laughs> and then the credits pop up and it says, it's like normal credits and then it says, Greeny the Weenie Man created by Gary Young. And I was like, I need to know what the fuck this credit means. What is Greeny the Weenie Man? So I start looking it up. There is nothing on the internet about it. Um, but I think I figured out who it is. <laughs> I think it's the subhumanoid that talks like a British actor, <laughs> like a British thespian. Do you know who I'm talking the one, about? The one that was in all green. The one that was what? M- remember somebody comes in, they're in an all green, they're, they're dressed like Master Chief from uh, Halo. No, not that. No, it was like. This little subhumanoid thing, like one of the little heads that floats around. But oh, this, oh, the li- oh. <laughs> this was the, the head that crank. was going like, help me, help me, Roger. And oh, <laughs> dude, dude, the one, the one that, that they ripped off from Almer. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking so weird. I think that's Greeny the Weenie Man, but I, I can't be sure. Um. And we, yeah, we get this insane uh, uh, montage of the, like the lockdown evacuation and riots and everyone's leaving the school, <laughs> fucking cars crashing, buses crashing. <laughs> it's honestly crazy the budget they had because I know they use a lot of like. Okay, I'm glad you brought that up because he's exploding buses. I mean, what, <laughs> this is, what are you doing? It, it's crazy. And I know that like the, they, they often in trauma like recycle their stuff. This was not recycled. This was all new explosion material. Yeah. Because we see the cars operating earlier in the movie. It's not It's not the generic B-roll that they use normally. Like, this is all new. Dude, they use claymation in this. <laughs> and, like, it's not far off from, like, Army of Darkness's claymation. Like... No, it's not. <laughs> like, it's right there. So, like, that's... That's a that's a bigger budget, man. <laughs> like I don't I don't know how they do it. And then we also see a giant kaiju fucking squirrel stepping on model buildings. Dude, having a kaiju in this movie, I <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we meet our hero Roger Smith, who is uh, dictating. And I know, I know, I know Lloyd Kaufman wrote this line because it made me laugh and. Obviously, that would make him up. His goodbye bye line. <laughs> his goodbye bye line. <laughs> Dictating his goodbye bye line. Because um, he's, a, he's a journalist for the college. <laughs> First, I thought he was like an undercover journalist. And then it turns out he's just a student journalist. 
Yeah, I thought he was too. I thought he was like because he's acting like he's he's a frontline army journalist. Yes, you know? yes. That he was deployed there, but he's just a fucking idiot that goes to the school. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and he loses the woman he loves, Victoria, and uh, one of the, another funny scene is like he she she's dying, and he's like, "Well, rest in peace, Victoria." And then he like, her tongue is hanging out of her mouth, and he shoves it back into her, her mouth. <laughs> and honestly, would you do that if it was the woman you loved? <laughs> when I shove her tongue back in her mouth, yeah, like to save her the fucking embarrassment when the paramedics get there. <laughs> I don't. I feel like Tina would ask. That would cause <laughs> so much complications. At, at, like when they do their investigation, <laughs> why are your fingerprints all over her fucking tongue? <laughs> your fucking. Why was her tongue <laughs> lodged down her throat? <laughs> she was alive until you put that bacteria in her. Yeah, mouth. yeah. She suffocated because <laughs> you. <laughs> Oh, good. <laughs> oh, it's so sad. She would have survived if all that bacteria somehow didn't show up in her mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Well, Roger Smith, uh, or Richard Smith, however you want to call him, talks for so long while all this absolute chaos is happening around him. And then he says, and you, th- you think this is just going to like be the way the movie pops off, which would have been very trauma-esque, and I was fine with it. But then he's like, oh, just to think a few weeks ago, everything on campus was perfectly normal. <laughs> and you're like, dude, we're going back again? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> we're going to go back and come back to this scene again? Like, come on, man. Um. And it's just nonstop. This this movie is nonstop bits, right? It's just bit after right. bit after punchline after <laughs> dad joke. <laughs> it's meta joke. And it's just like all over the place. Like the cafeteria, like it's like the typical trauma cafeteria where there's like rats in the food and stuff. And but like the, he's narrating it now, Roger. And he's like, the cafeteria only serves plastic novelty toys. That's kind of weird. And you're like, <laughs> All right, we we fucking get it. Like, and that's why I think the first one works so well is because I, I hesitate to I hesitate to word it like this, but like it is a comment like it's like a social commentary like like Louis somehow pulled it off as like yeah. represents the New York of the time, but it's you know over exaggerated tenfold, and I think that's why the first one is pulled off so well, but this one going into the 90s like the the 80s punk boom and and the 80s new york was no longer and it just it it, it doesn't work as well yeah i i think i think that's i think that's really the key here because i think this is the start of trauma moving towards the weird late trauma stuff you know what i mean like cuz i don't you know like the later nineties trauma stuff is like, just like nonsense. I'm going to be honest. Like, I don't love it. Like it's kind of fucking annoying to be perfectly honest with you. And I feel like this is the start of that, right? Like, I feel like this is setting that, that stage for those later trauma movies that. All right. Let's, 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 uh, Sergeant Kabuki man was 1990. So that was good. We like that. Right. Then 91 has this. They call me Macho Woman in Vegas in sp- Vegas in space. What a, what a fucking name! <laughs> um, they have, have body parts in ninety two, the only trauma release in ninety two, the trauma system in ninety three. We have Nukem High three in ninety four. We have Fro- <laughs> we have Frostbiter Wrath of the Wendigo. I, I need to see that. Yeah, that's in ninety five. Uh, doing? <laughs> <laughs> but then, he, but then he comes with Tromeo and Juliet. In '96, I haven't seen that. And then uh, you're right, nothing, nothing good until Terra Firmer in '99. Uh, Which even that is like definitely off the normal trauma. Like the early trauma stuff is very much like like real movies. Like I, they don't, they're not like they're not as like tongue in cheek. Like uh, you know, I don't know how to explain it. Like I guess it's the meta thing. Yeah, Toxic Avenger 
is a pretty good one to point to. It's like he's legitimately making a monster movie. Yeah. But also like talking about, you know, the, somehow bringing in the uh the fear of the nuclear war between <laughs> like the like the cold war, right? Yeah, yeah. Somehow it, pulling that together. Yeah, I don't know. Go back just, and listen to our interview with Lloyd. He says that every movie he's ever made, he's legitimately upset that it <laughs> <laughs> or that he's been involved with, he's legitimately upset that it, it's not a huge hit. There's no way he could watch Class of Nukem High too and, and be surprised about that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> oh, it's so funny. Like even the fucking script is like so bizarre. I guess tr- like, they're explaining this Trauma Institute of Technology tit. Uh, for us in typical trauma fashion, right? Just like showing you absurd shit and being like, this is trauma high, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> um, and they're doing that. And, the, and then we learn about this naughty gang who we've seen the, the entire, like all of these scenes, we've seen them and they look like the, the Cretans, right? From the old movies. Right. But they are not the Cretans in this movie. No. They are the squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> a new gang in the trauma verse uh boy i hated that name <laughs> <laughs> the squirrels <laughs> and the 80s even, is over man they re- they referenced the cretans at one point in like the end of the movie which i thought was like weird but also this was not filmed in new york which they usually are this was filmed in arizona so i wonder I'm just wondering if Lloyd was just like, no, you guys are not Cretans. You guys are <laughs> fucking squirrels. <laughs> a, a turf war? In Arizona. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, these are the, these are the, these are the, the squirrels of the gang here. The leader of the squirrels is Yoke, who is dressed like fucking Bastion Booger. He just wears black underwear, <laughs> fucking leather straps all over him. <laughs> Uh, it runs so much. It runs so much. And, and and we learn that nothing frightens the squirrels. Nothing except young prepubescent boys on rollerblades. That is how the line is delivered in the movie. <laughs> the narrator delivers that line. <laughs> the weirdest thing ever. And you see prepubescent boys on rollerblades and all the squirrels are like, get out of here. <laughs> weirdest fucking thing and they they will come back at the end for no reason so look forward to that um yeah meanwhile richard smith he's got a class of newcomb high poster in his fucking room which like, are we fucking kidding me right now um and after 16 minutes dude we're only at 16 minutes in and so much has happened it's like literally non-stop shit and this is the only reason i well i shouldn't say the only reason it's the main reason I want everyone to watch it because there's so much going on that like we will not be able to talk about all the dumb shit that happens in the background. And honestly, no, you can't. It would, it would be dude, it would be a four hour episode. <laughs> and it, and honestly, the other part of that is it is really fucking dumb. So if you don't, <laughs> I, the, I, I'm saying to watch it for the dumb stuff. There's a good chance you'll watch it and be like, this is absolutely fucking the worst. Shit I've ever seen. What is Sean talking about? It, it it's bet no, it's better served for like a party setting. Like if you were yeah. having a bunch of people over and like they're walking in and out of the room, getting <laughs> drinks and whatnot, having that in the background, I'm sure it would be good. Like because you could sit down and watch it for like five minutes. But like, this is what am I watching? This is absurd. <laughs> but I I just can't in good faith recommend, especially if you're only like a casual trauma watcher. Like you've only seen a couple. Oh, that's true. Like, that's don't, true. Don't sit down and fucking watch this one, man. Watch the first one. Watch another trauma movie. <laughs> well, Rod- but party setting. Go ahead. So go ahead. Roger is, uh, as we said, he was a wrestler before he was an actor. So he's fucking huge. He's absolutely enormous. He's jacked, and, and he's clearly like thinks of himself as a hunk. He says it a couple times in the in the movie. So you're like, oh, this is going to be the hunk of the movie. Um. <laughs> Turns out everyone fucking hates Roger, and that might be the funniest part of this movie. Uh, everyone constantly talking about how bad he smells. <laughs> it's like <laughs> one of the funniest fucking things, and it's always under their breath as they're walking away. It's all that dubbed audio that like Lloyd just fucking loves to add in post production because he's probably like, "This isn't funny enough." Like, just 
put in a voice as somebody's walking away being like, oh, that guy fucking smells. Because <laughs> every scene he's in, it features a voice in the background being like, who fucking stinks? <laughs> it's unbelievable. And he's a- like you said, he, he he's physically fit. And he's not a bad looking guy, except for that stupid ponytail. But like, there's always scenes where he's he's helping a, a woman. Like, he saves somebody's baby, and they're immediately just like, "Go fuck yourself, <laughs> <laughs> go fuck yourself, you smelly piece of shit." Dude, uh, he goes to his uh, room to check his voicemails because he's looking for a date, and all the voicemails are women that he's tried to go on dates with. And they're all the most insulting calls I've ever heard in my life. One woman's like, yeah, I decided I'd rather have sex with a water bug than you, but th- thanks, for, <laughs> thanks for the invite. And everyone's, every single one mentions that he fucking stinks. And like the, the scene is playing out and all you could do is focus on these voicemail calls that are still playing in the background. And it's like, yeah, being with you made me realize I hate everything about you. And I went back with my ex and uh, we listened to your call. It's fucking miserable. And also you smell <laughs> <laughs> it's so insane <laughs> and he's not reacting to any of them and it's and it's so amazing and this guy might be the most physically fit human to ever be in a trauma movie right <laughs> like like yeah yeah trauma is not known for their uh you know muscular physique actors <laughs> like this dude this dude is like on top for like <laughs> and constantly dude berating him with about how he smells um and and that scene you talk about where he saves a baby happens next because the squirrels steal a woman's baby and are like playing hot potato <laughs> with it. And one guy's like, oh, I don't want this thing and throws it a fucking hundred yards <laughs> and Roger runs and fucking catches it like a layout fucking NFL catch a fucking mile away. Um, and yeah, the woman comes up to him and is like, you fucking scumbag. <laughs> So, fucking great. Well, he finds out about a sex experiment because he can't get laid on his own. And it costs $8 uh, <laughs> to you go have sex. <laughs> it's an, also an experiment. <laughs> Wh- which, I guess, comes into play, sort of. Um, and this is where he meets the Victoria, the love of his life. But this time she's alive. Um, and Roger is blindfolded. Uh, and he's going to have sex with Victoria. Victoria opens up her robe. We, of course, see a gigantic close-up of her breasts. And uh, then we also see a giant close-up of a mouth on her fucking stomach. <laughs> it reminded me of uh, of uh, Ver- Veronica. Yes, yes. Uh, very the, similar. The mouth on the nipples. <laughs> very similar vibe. But but the difference being, like, Lloyd was probably, probably like, this would be so fucking funny to have a mouth here. Oh. Where where Glenn Glenn is on record being like, I don't know why people were laughing at this, (laughs) despite me putting a mouth on a mouth where nipples should be. (laughs) Or no, their eyes. Sorry, their eyes. Eyes and Veronica. Dude, for sure, for sure, Lloyd was just laughing about this. Dude, there's a there's like a three minute montage in the middle of the movie of just close ups of all of the subhumanoids belly mouths doing things like drinking and smoking and brushing their teeth. (laughs) Like, he clearly just put it in for that fucking montage, because there's no purpose for that. (laughs) None. This is fucking idiotic. (laughs) And, uh, I'm going to be honest, like, the effects for it aren't terrible. I couldn't couldn't do that on a low budget. (laughs) They're not. They're not terrible. (laughs) Like, fuck. Like, it's not that bad. Um and this is, but this is also just also like, watching watching her just like wiggle down so like the her belly is where his wiener is <laughs> and being like oh it feels like you have a mouth there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that it was. Uh, I'll be honest, that was repulsive. That was stomach churning. <laughs> watching her fuck him with her belly mouth. <laughs> Meanwhile, the scientists are watching this, and that's when we learn that the scientists are trying to create a subhuman slave race. Um, now, like to your point, what does this have to do with a woman with a stomach on her mouth? Uh, we don't really <laughs> know. <laughs> it's not really a matter. And then we learn that she's been uh, the doctor. Oh, fuck, I forget her name. Um, it begins with an H. Uh, 
I forgot. I picked it up later in the movie. Um, damn it. I forget her name. Holt. Professor Holt was her name. Um, Professor Holt leads us through a uh, a chamber of all of her experiments where she was trying to create these the slave race of humanoids, subhumanoids, and she tried combining a lizard with a member of the hair club for men. A classic 90s bit. Love it. <laughs> Try, tried to combine a human with a fly. Okay. Then I tried to combine a sophomore student and a trained dolphin that's bulimic. Cut to a uh, half man, half dolphin that is vomiting everywhere. <laughs> vomiting. Uh, insane. Weirdest joke to ever put in a movie of all time. <laughs> Um, and I really don't understand really the, 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 the purpose of any of this, but she ends up getting like a half gorilla, half human hybrid, and they can fuck humans with their clothes on or something. And, um, uh, this is all things that they say. I'm not fabricating this. And, um, but the, those gorilla people aren't the subhumanoids. The subhumanoids are, um, grown in bags in a lab. So, I don't know. I think they just have to fuck the monkeys and then the eight people and then like sh- shoot the baby into a bag or something. I, I'm, 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 I'm struggling to figure it out. <laughs> I'm struggling. I'm really struggling. Um, but anyway, uh, and then, oh, and then they bring up like the squirrels. So I was like, oh, are the squirrels subhumanoids? But then I was like, that doesn't make sense. Cause none of the squirrels have, like and every fucking squirrel has their stomach hanging out. Man, woman, child. They're all fucking all. barely wearing clothes. So I was like, well, they're not subhumanoids. So I don't actually know what they're talking about. And this is revealed by Dean Okra, who uh is the one doing the tiny Tim impression the entire movie, just being like, Whoa! fucking Paul Bearer ass voice. <laughs> Weird ass shit. Um, his, his assistant having long hair with a bird's nest up top is the most like stupid trauma joke. Yes, I can't tell if I love it or if I hate it. <laughs> and that's Professor Holt. Professor Holt's with the giant hair, which I thought was going to come into play at some point, and it doesn't. It kind of does at the end, but not really. Not really. Like not enough to make that a thing for the entire movie. Um, and, and this guy's tiny Tim voice is so insane that you actually, it's actually hard to understand what he's saying, (laughs) you know, like it's so bizarre that you, you actually, it's, I had trouble understanding what he was saying sometimes. (laughs) It's like a dog whistle. (laughs) It really was. Um, and then we get the montage of the, the stomach mouth smoking and shaving Dude, the the stomach mouth that shaved and then had like the tissues, (laughs) the tissues on the cuts. (laughs) <laughs> fucking amazing um and, and yeah the subhumanoids they're kind of weird they they have like a little bit of super strength kind of but they professor holt is making them to do menial tasks that's her goal and then it seems that dean okra's goal is something else yes don't know his goal though but that's okay um and then toxie makes an appearance <laughs> And then it turns into a movie set, as you said, and it goes complete meta, where it's like, we're trying to film Nukem High 2, Toxie. What are you doing here, you stupid idiot? <laughs> uh, but, but Toxie is real in this. He's not an actor. So he's like, huh? <laughs> I mean, it's not, it's not the worst bit. It is kind of funny. <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous. And then, then we continue with the movie. Uh and we, we see subhumanoids, they're like entering uh, society, kind of. They're entering the school system. Uh, one of them has helped lead the trauma team, basketball team, to to a perfect record. But then she just starts melting on the court and a fucking face comes out of her stomach. <laughs> and the best part about the bit with this, um, which by the way, this is called the subhumanoid meltdown. Like right. subhumanoid meltdown syndrome is what they 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 call it throughout the movie, um, but when when it happens, uh, Professor Holt will come out and like try to clean up the mess and be like, oh yeah, and they always blame it on doing exercise too quickly after eating. 
And everyone's like, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which I fucking love. Fucking love it. Um, Roger goes to the newspaper editor to to try and, uh, you know, tell him he's got a hot lead here on this on this story of a subhumanoid meltdown which she she shoots down and it's very clear that she's part of the plan you know she's yep. she, she's in on it <laughs> um also i couldn't help but hear gabagoo when that guy <laughs> roger <laughs> roger explained that she had melted down to a glob of goo, goo a glob of goo and i was just like i it's like, how do you not? <laughs> it fucking sounds exactly like gabagoo. Uh, but whatever. Um, wasn't wasn't it wasn't in the vernacular at the time. No, I guess not. It should be. Uh, and that's yeah. And then she coins the phrase "the subhumanoid meltdown," and he's like, <laughs> and they like play music and typical trauma, like fucking. Well, we didn't talk about the, we didn't talk about the theme song. Oh, yay or nay for the theme. yay to the theme song. That theme song, it's, it's great. It's great. Fucking even rock. though it plays, you know, maybe perhaps six times too many. It, <laughs> it's good. Well, you know what was crazy about that theme song? It actually explains the entire movie, um, <laughs> yeah. which is crazy to me because you heard it before some of the events happened, and, and they definitely played it. But then they would play it again, and you'd be like, oh. Now they're ex- like they played it at the very beginning before we knew mouths were a thing, and then later you hear the line and they're like they've got mouths in their belly button, <laughs> and you're like oh shit like that's funny like <laughs> that's kind of fucking weird. What theme song slaps harder, this one or a uh, haunted ween? Oh, uh, this one for sure. So, dude, subhumanoid meltdown is fucking great. <laughs> How, this is this is how it's done, guys. This is how it's done. So, <laughs> remember when the guy from Manos Hands of Fate just told everyone not to worry about things because Hollywood would fix it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Honestly, if you were on a movie set and people started questioning you, that's probably what I would say. Also, <laughs> <laughs> especially oh. people like not involved in Hollywood. Yeah. Y- yeah, you'd be like, listen, guys, you guys don't know shit. I'm the fucking... <laughs> <laughs> I'm big Hollywood. Don't worry. <laughs> fucking fix it in post, brother. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and, then, and then do nothing. <laughs> yeah. That poor guy who's probably like, my fucking knees are broken. <laughs> He's like, that. we'll fix that in post, too. We'll fix that in post, too. <laughs> Remember that guy got like really hurt, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, dude, like I like ruined his life, didn't he? <laughs> He's never the same again. I don't know why I'm laughing. It's terrible. It's honestly heartbreaking <laughs> for fucking Emmanuel Sanson feet. <laughs> it's just like the way he walked was so fucking idiotic. It's actually <laughs> crazy. <laughs> so <Torgo>. necessary. <laughs> Oh, uh, man. <laughs> well, um, we go to a squ- we go to a squirrel party. All this is supposed to be like part of a plot that just like is just like you're right. Like this could have been 30 minutes, right? <laughs> like cuz now we yeah. oh, we open a plot now where it's like oh, the professor wants to take care of the subhumanoids even though she- it didn't appear that way whatsoever at the beginning. Of the movie. No. <laughs> She's making a fucking uh a fucking slave race of of subhumans uh to do her bidding so not like a likable character but she's supposed to be turned into one here um where she's like hey you don't treat the subhumanoids bad which is fucking weird and then uh dean okra who wants to abuse them and basically like gives them to the squirrels to like fuck around with (laughs) And like this, so like we see like this squirrel party where they just like make, make this subhumanoid eat a glass bottle, <laughs> and then they're shocked when he fucking dies. They're like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> <laughs> Got glass poking out of his cheeks. Dude, the special effects in this are absolutely nuts. I, I really did not. That's think trauma for you, man. That. I gotta. Re- I have Lloyd's book, and I've never read it. I just want to because you know, say what you will about trauma, and like even this one 
I don't like the movie that much. It, it doesn't do much for me, but to be that like indie and to have those effects and like discussing face melting scenes, it's incredible. He's, he's really like a genius with that stuff. The effects in this are out of control. Also, maybe this was the movie that bankrupted them. <laughs> Because that list you told me after this is not good. And, like, the effects in this are not... Dude, it's insane how many there are. It's nonstop. It's, it's like, old school trauma in that sense. Where it's just like, holy shit. Like, every single character melts <laughs> at one point. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, the subhumanoids... Uh, yeah, that's it. Oh, and and for some reason, oh, also, the Professor Holt wants to fix the meltdown syndrome. Or yes, something. like to help them. I don't, I don't know. Anyway, so she's looking for like a a, a a cure for that. Um, meanwhile, fucking old Roger Smith finally sees the mouth in Victoria's stomach. Um. <laughs> And freaks out, so she storms away. And then he immediately is like, just because Victoria had lips on her belly didn't mean I didn't love her. (laughs) Best line of all time. (laughs) So he goes to chase her. He sneaks into the lab. And this is when he learns all about the subhumanoids. uh, Because he, he, uh, Victoria and uh, Professor Holt are captured by Dean. And... uh, they are kidnapped and taken away where they were, they're discussing the subhumanoid thing. And Dean Okra, I guess, wants the formula to fix the meltdown because he, I don't know, wants to rule the world with the subhumanoids. And, and Professor Holtz, this, this is a very weak story as I'm explaining it. So, you, you, <laughs> all right, all right, good job. And then we get the Bob Saget squirrel voice that you were talking about here because it cuts to, um, some like toxic waste or some oh no it's it's some melted subhumanoid in a bucket that tipped over and a squirrel is outside and the squirrel is narrating (laughs) is narrating this scene and is doing like no was it bob saget or was it the other guy doing um america's funniest people when with that voice no no it is bob it was bob saget because the jackalope is the other guy I don't remember the jackalope. You don't remember the jackalope? No. Nah. Bro, what? All right. Well, they both you're did. You're talking about Tom? What? No, not Tom Bergeron. Fucking America's Funniest People with uh, Dave Couillet. Oh, wait, wait. <laughs> How many fucking Full House alumni? Oh, they both. Kind of dude, they went up against each other. They went head to head, baby. <laughs> And uh, no, it, I can tell you because I never watched that. Uh, I was I was Team Elena. So oh my I god! Never watched Dave Couillé. Well, I mean, I was. We were probably seven at the time. I don't think I knew. <laughs> I don't think he had dated Alanis yet. But <laughs> she went down to him on a theater. Uh, I'm Team. I'm Team Elena. <laughs> Leave that behind. I, I listen. I uh, I'm with you, but at the time, I was all about that jackalope on America's Funniest People. He, they did I, like, honestly, I probably have seen that. I got I got to look it up. I don't. They know did like skits on it. They did skits. Anyway, the point is, it's this fucking absurd squirrel voice that's like, <laughs> "Oh, this looks so yummy," <laughs> and the squirrel is narrating him eating it and just like being like, mm, "Nom nom nom, this is so good." Ooh. I have a belly. <laughs> and we cut to this squirrel like 18 times talking to himself. And like, we'll, we'll go back to the movie and then come back to the squirrel. Who's like, mm, oh, my tummy hurts. I'm growing. <laughs> and like, they literally, all they had to do was show us. Like we would have figured it out. Right. <laughs> like, it's so unnecessary. It might be the most unnecessary in a movie full of unnecessary things. This might be the most unnecessary. I, honestly, I think I agree. I think I agree. <laughs> They might have honestly done that because America's Funniest Video was was so big at the time. Oh, fuck. You might be right. Pulling pulling the Bob Saget fan base. (laughs) (laughs) Imagine sending in a video of, like, your loved ones getting hit in the nuts and having to listen to that 
<laughs> the fucking idiot Bob Saget narrate in that voice over it. So I actually is looked. Even, at, oh, what? It's gone. I was just going to say, like, it, why is he doing that? Making up his own scenario, like his own conversations over, over the video. When, when all the videos have fucking audio. Yeah, it was really fucking weird. And so I actually pulled it up because of this. Because I was like, I want to, I was like, did Bob Saget do the squirrel and the jackalope? Or like, I couldn't figure it out. So Bob Saget did have like a squirrel voice for sure. But I I found a clip from the first season. And I think it was the first episode, actually. Dude, they were playing like the tamest videos that were so, so unfunny. I can't believe it made it past season one. But <laughs> I, I think for the time, it was probably like, I don't know. Like, I, I, can't, I can't. Joe, the first clip I saw was a baby just spitting up. Like, it was just a baby spitting. Like, oh, oh John, I, that, that lasted for seasons. It was <laughs> always just like kids picking their nose on camera or like, like some guys mildly stumbling. <laughs> Like, not even falling down, just like tripping on camera, dude. Like that's, so, that's so great, dude. A baby <laughs> spinning up is like literally just life. That's the, that's the way life works. <laughs> the baby spits up. It's the smallest amount of spit up. It doesn't even touch the guy who's holding the baby, and he's just like, oh, jeez. And then the mom's like, oh boy, and like it cuts, and the crowd's like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> It was the craziest yeah, yeah. shit. No, Sean, they would have like segments where they would group it all together. So there'd be like the baby bits where it's just <laughs> them doing that. And then it'd be like the bits where people fall off bikes. But again, it's not ever in a funny manner. It's like trying to get off and like stumbling the two steps or something. Ridiculous. <laughs> oh, man. And Bob Saget doing voices over it. <laughs> Oh, fuck. That's funny. Um, anyway, so that squirrel's eating sludge, so you can guess where that's going because he starts walking on two feet and clearly growing. So that's that. Uh, meanwhile, a subhumanoid head starts chasing Roger around with a British accent, being like, Roger, please help me, which has not happened to any of the other subhumanoid heads, uh, but this one it does. Um and for some reason, they actually have like a sit down and a chat about, I don't even know. I'll, I'll be honest. I, I don't know. <laughs> it is what it is. And Ro- Roger, oh, the subhumanoid tells him, what is the subhumanoid? I think the subhumanoid reveals the entire plan of Dean Okra, which I thought Roger already knew, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> so, because then after that, Roger then goes to the classes and like, tries to rally the troops and like get these students to storm the reactor, which they do. And they, to fight back the, uh, the, the trauma nuclear plant. Um, by the way, I just want to highlight one of the classes is called Uzi one oh one, which always gives me a chuckle. (laughs) (laughs) Oh man. Uh, uh, We get Dean Okra is cutting off Holt's hair. Professor Holt's big, Ness hair to get information so i was like oh this will be something this will be like a f- there's definitely gonna be some sort of weird fucking mutant under there it's not he doesn't even cut it he just it, nothing happens it doesn't matter um and meanwhile the giant squirrel has arrived as they are fighting the nuclear plant uh the giant squirrel has arrived and of course somebody screams look at the size of those nuts cut to the squirrel who is holding Two giant <laughs> acor- acorns. <laughs> Classic trauma. Classic trauma. Um, also, the squirrel starts pissing somewhere and like just has a cigarette hanging out of his mouth. <laughs> so obscene. It's just so excessive. I fucking love it. Uh, one of the mutants gets free, though, from the, the cells and kills Dean Okra by ripping his fucking head off and eating it. Um, this allows Professor Holt to escape and Roger to save his uh, love of his life, Victoria. And then we just start seeing people's fucking faces melt. And we're back to where we started at the beginning of the movie. Um, but we're just cutting to people melting. Oh, dude. And the the most disgusting scenes I've ever seen of these two people who are fucking... And they're like, well, we're going to die anyway. They're normal people at first. And they're like, we're, we're going to die anyway, so why don't we go out screwing? And uh, we will cut back to them uh, every, like, two minutes. 
and they start melting on to each other and like to each other. And it is honestly stomach churning to watch. It, it was one of the most repulsive things because they're fucking making out and their cheeks are like melted into one another. It's so fucking gross, dude. It's I can't even imagine doing that with a person with all that shit on you. Like I'd be like, you, you got to get the fuck out of here. Like get the fuck away from me. Like I can't, I can't do this. <laughs> fucking disgusting um so <laughs> roger's still narrating and he goes well it seemed like the end of the world or at least the end of this movie um <laughs> and also a classic moment in this movie for me was uh the army's like shooting the squirrel and they're like it's a giant squirrel <laughs> and the squirrel for some reason flips him off for i don't i don't know why <laughs> Like gives him the finger and one of the guys starts freaking out and he starts screaming. He gave us the finger. He gave us the finger. He's a crass squirrel. <laughs> I fucking imagine writing that down and being like, you're going to say this. <laughs> you're going to call this giant fucking lethal squirrel a crass squirrel. Crass squirrel. <laughs> oh my God. Um, yeah, it's a crest squirrel. So Roger gives Victoria the serum that uh, Professor Holt had in her hair, which is the use of the hair. But by the way, the serum was a test tube. It could have been in her fucking pocket. So don't don't tell me the hair is necessary. Um, and Roger gives a speech about the subhumanoids and the humans can now live in harmony <laughs> and adds at the end. Uh, unfortunately, only Victoria had the antidote. So... <laughs> so <laughs> Funniest thing. Uh, so all the subhumanoids <laughs> are dead. <laughs> and the squirrel, though, is still alive, which he acknowledges. Like, he's wrapping up this movie, and then he's like, yeah, but the squirrel, uh, that thing with the squirrel it was still happening. <laughs> and then it kind of ends and then kind of goes back to the squirrel. And we finally get the Lloyd show up here, where Lloyd is the voice of uh, the helicopter pilot. <laughs> the helicopter pilot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. I fucking love his voice. It's so funny. And he's just flying a decoy acorn around the squirrel. And it's him and that guy, Michael Hertz, who, like, is it Michael Hers? Hers, I think is his name. Michael Hers, yeah. It, it, this guy, Michael Hers, who's been his, like, partner. Uh, yeah, their names forever. will pop up on every. Yeah. I, by the way, they have the greatest uh, title screen. Oh, for sure. The old school New York skyline with with their, like, the 80s news screen. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. That, like, synth song that plays on it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, he's fucking phenomenal. And uh, it, Michael Hers does one of the voices in it. And uh, so it's him and his buddy there doing the voices of these pilots. But it's the most insane thing. He's just like, I've got the decoy. And it's just a giant acorn. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just flying around the squirrel and they're trying to lure him away to East Tromaville where both of their mothers and mother-in-laws live. Cause that, that joke is always great. <laughs> always happy to hear that joke. Um, and, uh, that's the end of the fucking movie. <laughs> they don't, they don't actually, they're, they're like, it ends with Michael Hurst being like, did he lure him away? And then it just, cuts <laughs> to credits <laughs> Holy. see see not i'm not saying this for like to to our own horns i'm saying this to emphasize my point the length of this episode would be perfect for that fucking film like <laughs> cut out 45 minutes of the bullshit that you had to sit through i would recommend it to everybody yeah but it's just it just runs too long Nothing happens. Nothing. We, they got, we get we get two flashbacks. The guy narrates all this bullshit, and then you, as you just said, there's no payoff. Everybody dies. We don't even know what happens with the big squirrel. <laughs> it's actually crazy. It's actually fucking crazy. It's actually fucking crazy. <laughs> oh, I fucking love it though, man. I I don't know. It's it's bizarre. It's fucking trauma. I don't know. I can't I can't get enough of it. Well, we should be excited cuz uh guess what we're doing next week? <laughs> Tales from the Crapper. Listen, I I've never seen it uh based off title alone. I love it. Yeah, and uh the fact that Lloyd plays the crap keeper is the funniest shit. That's actually why I chose it. I told Joe that. 
Um, and I think, I think James Gunn is involved in this movie. Um, 2004, uh, James Gunn plays, uh, James Gunn, I guess. Uh, let's hear the plot. Troma co-founder and B-movie director, producer Lloyd Kaufman plays the crap keeper. He presents the viewers with two (laughs) horror, (laughs) two horror stories. Uh, Matt, dude, like the guy like has some money, right? (laughs) Imagine you're like, all right, I'll play, I'll play, uh, I'll play the crap keeper. <laughs> 2004, he was in his, probably in his 60s. No, 50s, I guess. Uh, you know, fucking weirdo. Um, he presents the horror, the viewers with two horror stories that contain gore, nudity, fat men, talking penises, <laughs> lesbian scenes, vampires, UFOs. Did you, did you say- <laughs> Did you say fat men? Fat men. Ah, dude, I'm reading this. <laughs> All those other things you list are so like, you know, like paranormal, like not day-to-day things. It's just fat men. And, a, and appearances by porn star Ron Jeremy and the band Newfound Glory. Oh my god. The film was purportedly shot over three years with six directors and close to 15 writers. <laughs> what? What is happening? Sometimes sometimes I feel like he might add those rumors in himself. You know what I mean? Like Oh yeah. There's no way there's six directors involved with this. Oh After my god. like the third one, they would just be like, you know what, this is We've had enough. Dude, this is so weird. Kevin Eastman is in it, who created the Ninja Turtles comic book. Um, George George Garcia from fucking Lost is in it, playing a guy named Raccoon Head. <laughs> Wait, is that, is that Hurley? Yeah, or is it Jorge Garcia? I'm sorry, I'm a fucking idiot. That's Jorge, right? I think so, but yeah. it's a guy that plays Hurley, right? Yeah, Hurley. Nine hundred pounds. Yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Trey Parker's in it. Ted Raimi's in it. What the fuck? What a I think we- it might be good then. Eli Roth is in it. <laughs> you said two, what, what year was this? Two thousand two thousand four. Wow. <laughs> Um, there's somebody by the name of Count Smokula <laughs> playing himself. <laughs> <laughs> what? This is fucking the best shit ever. <laughs> Tales from the Crapper. I'm excited. <laughs> Count Smokula is a 496 year old accordion playing vampire. <laughs> oh my god I fucking love it and of course like a ton of uh, porn stars of course goes without course. saying goes without saying so tune in next week for Tales from the Crapper it's a solid 90 minute flick so get ready for that <laughs> Count Smokula <laughs> is <laughs> this is fucking nuts? First off, he has a tongue that might be like fifteen feet long. I've never seen that, dude. Oh my god! Oh my god! Is that real? <laughs> that's dude. That's disgusting. <laughs> why? Why is this guy famous? <laughs> oh man, that's rich. This movie's gonna rule. Dude, yeah, dude, it's it's real. There's a picture of him with uh, some some lady. Oh my <laughs> god! Like, You're like right. The length of her entire fucking <laughs> torso. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? What is what's wrong with this guy? <laughs> How a four hundred. Dude, why is he still around? How a 496-year-old vampire is selling NFTs. <laughs> and the picture of him is insane. <laughs> Look at like a fucking bozo. <laughs> oh, my God. 
I am uh I'm all in on this guy, Count Smokey Love. Me too. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> all right. Well, it just goes to show you, like, if you just dress like an asshole long enough, like <laughs> you could gain some traction. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Wasn't there that guy that like we would see at cons? Oh yeah, he was dressed as like a, a priest. Remember that guy? He was like bald. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was always at the Connecticut ones. Yeah, um, but like we also saw, doctor. we ended up seeing him in like Chicago and stuff. Also, do you remember that? Yeah, he 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 gets hired to like just to walk around go to the cons as a character. Yeah, a fucking cre- <laughs> like oh, it's all you have to do. Then you just walk around like this guy just walks around like a fucking priest, like a fucking creepy priest. Yeah, he puts it in context. Like, look at this fuck. He's a, he's, a, he's a plague doctor, but he doesn't even wear those, like, big, you know, the big beaked plague ma- doctor masks. No, no, no it's not the plague doctor guy. This guy's bald and dressed like a priest. No, I know exactly what you're talking about. He goes by the plague doctor. What? He goes, it, dude, that's his, like, gimmick. Oh, is it? Yeah. But he doesn't have the plague doctor mask. You can see his face. No. No, you should see his face. I, dude, trust me, I know exactly what you're talking about. Oh, that's fucking weird. That's fucking weird. That's my point. He doesn't wear that mask. It's like he's he's arguably like the least unique. Like, <laughs> that's actually crazy. But good for him. Like, I'm not. I'm not hating on him. Like, no, no, I'm, I'm saying that- to pull to pull that off without even doing the plague doctor gimmick. That, yeah, legendary. That's like what Count Smokula did. Like, they were just like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to dress around. I'm going to dress like a fucking... You're right, dude. You're right. Because this guy's not a vampire. There's, I, I'm, I'm looking at, like, 50 pictures of him. There is nothing that indicates this man is a fucking vampire. <laughs> he just plays the fucking accordion. Dude, he wears a stupid hat, carries an accordion, and has a long tongue. There's nothing that would ever make me think this man was, was playing a vampire. <laughs> Oh, uh, fuck. <laughs> I'm excited. Tales from the Crapper, guys. Um, and then Turkey Shoot, and then Thanksgiving 3. we got a great November. I'm pumped. And then a great December and January. The Dude, the live show that I have picked out for January is a chef kiss, but I'll hold on to it. Hold on to Ooh. it. And I think the December live show, the, the second showing... Uh, that movie, which I'll hold on to till December, I also think we will have a lot of people very excited to watch that. So, okay, um, tune in, f- gang, and the December one will be free for everyone. So, we will. Nice. Uh, yeah, that'll be fun to to bring Special in a guest like Count Smokey. <laughs> Dude, I'm gonna try and book him for the show. <laughs> Please don't. Are you kidding me? He probably That's charges happened. like an astronomical fee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right guys so that's it um thank you all so much again for the pre-orders thanks to all of our patreon supporters um you if you want to donate patreon.com slash i hate horror like really appreciate all of you for your donations it's just so it, it means a lot to us um merch should be shipping in the next few weeks so look out for that and then uh probably december we'll open back up with some a really small amount of orders for that and then uh start working on our next merch drop which will do something fun and unique for that um as we try to always do um what else do we promote oh instagram.com slash i hate horror i hate horror.com um and facebook.com slash i hate horror and joe where can they find you Instagram, Boognish1985. Perfect. All right, guys. Thank you all so much. Thanks to Joe for doing the show for me. And for Joe, this is Sean. Stay weird. Thank you. Adios. Butcher, 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 butcher.